What's going on, Facebook Live? It has been a while. Glad to be back. Hopefully, you are having an amazing day. Let's see. Are there people out there? You out there? You're watching? <laughs> uh, let's see. As people are joining us, I'm going to get set up so we can do a podcast version of this. We will tune in. Uh, if you're not familiar with our podcast, it is Learn It, Live It, Give It. I think that's backwards, so. Learn It, Live It, Give It uh, podcast with Jerry. Sorry about that. Uh, anyways, welcome, welcome, welcome. Let me get this set up and hit record. And we're good. So as you're joining in, let's see, Brenda, nice to see you. As you're joining in, I would love it if you shared where you're tuning in from and three things you are grateful for today in your life or business. Um, the reason we always bring that up is to support the mindset of always finding something great that's going on and reinforcing it. Uh, what's right is always available and so is what's wrong. So we support you in always finding what's right with your life and, and feeling it and allowing yourself to feel grateful, excited, passionate, determined, whatever it is uh, that you feel when focused on that. Caleb, nice to see you. Congratulations on that speech in Australia, my friend. I uh, hope all is well. So welcome, 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 everyone. Love to know where you're tuning in from. Three things you're grateful for in the comment section right below this. Uh, if you're listening in on the podcast, send us an email or tweet us and tell us what you're grateful for. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about time management tips for busy entrepreneurs. It seems to be a popular topic. We asked people just the other day um, what, if anything, they struggle with, they're learning about, they're, they like more tips on or more insights. And a bunch of people said, you know, time management tips. If I have two businesses I'm trying to run, if I have a whole organization and a family I'm trying to keep manage, and there's lots and lots and lots of tips. So we're going to go through a handful of them tonight for you. And if you have a pen and paper, you're definitely going to want to take notes on this one. So in starting out, we just have to think of the initial, t I, I guess, framework we're going to use here, which is your mental constructs about what time is. And what I'd love you to figure out for the very, very first step in getting started tonight is first, what is time to you? So if you're watching on Facebook Live or if, if you're listening in, Katie, nice to see you. Uh, I, I'd love to know what is time to you? You know, where does it come from? How much do you have? What's a long time? What's a short time? And, and if you have a pen and paper, scribble this stuff down. If, if, if you're near your computer, type it in the answer so we can see it here. I want to start a conversation with you. And, and, and so what is time? How much is a lot? How much is a little? And for some people, when you think of a long time, for some people, that's like 15 minutes. It's a long time to wait for somebody. For other people, a long time is like 10 years. For some people, a short time is just a couple of years. It goes by in you know, just a snap in life. For other people, a, long, a short time is like 30 seconds. So I, I, I'd really ask to start with, what is time to you? Um, my thoughts on what time is, if I can share, is, you know, time is a mental construct. It's an emotional feeling we have. Because uh, the whole concept of time, you know, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, it's man-made. Someone sat down, you know, decades ago and came up with a whole factor that there's time that exists. And let's see. So here's some stuff popping up. Uh, Katie says, time is money to me. So I, I like to think of minutes. There is so much more you can do by the minute. Interesting. Uh, David says, my favorite subject, glad to hear. Jerome says, I'm grateful for the incredible growth of my Facebook page. I'm grateful for my friends and family. I'm grateful for opportunities I have available available in my beautiful in my life. Um, let's see, Asha? Asha? I think it's Asha. Uh, time is value. Interesting. Very interesting thought there. So to me, if I were to throw my thoughts out there, I, I heard it a long time ago said that time is nothing more than emotion. Because if you're in love with the, motion, with the moment, if you're in love with what you're doing, time disappears. Now, if you don't like what you're doing and you're frustrated with what you're doing and emotionally you do not enjoy it, it seems to last forever. And I'll give you two examples. Think about the last time you did something you absolutely loved. Hanging out with a family member, hanging out with a friend, going on a vacation, uh, going to a sporting event. Maybe it's a work for some of you that you're totally passionate about. But think of a moment where time literally disappeared. Usually, it's not where you were, but how you were doing it. 
you fell in love with that moment and time completely disappeared because you were passionate, you were excited about what you were doing. So one thing that I would capture if I were you is take a moment to write down what mental, emotional, and physical state do you have to be in for time to disappear? If we were to start there. Meaning what kind of projects do you have to be working on? What physical environment do you want to be in for time to disappear? What other people would you be around where time just disappears? What activities would you be doing? How would you, you know, what, where would you be? What would you be doing? What are all the elements involved where literally time just disappears? Where you look down for one moment, you're so busy doing it, you look back up and it's literally nine o'clock at night and you're like, wow, what the heck just happened? Where did the day go? Because you were totally immersed in what you were doing. Uh, Drum says, time is what you make it. Cherish every moment, but be congruent and everything else will flow. Cool. I like that. So here's the thought. Once you can identify what time is to you, then you can identify moments where it just disappears and you're just engulfed in that moment. Then the next step is really looking at how you actually structure and organize and use the time you have. Um, one belief you might want to have if you want to really maximize your performance is you have to believe time is valuable. You have to believe it's valuable. Um, if you cherish the moments you have, if you believe what you have is in limited supply and it's very, very valuable, you would treat it much differently than if you believe that you have a limited amount of time and it's not really important. Um, because then you waste it and you allow time to slip by without realizing the, the value of it and realizing how special and unique it is. So what would you have to believe about time to lock in the thought and the mental construct that it's literally one of the most important assets you have in your entire life? Katie says, in reality, while doing tasks that, I, that are less enjoyable, I try to put myself in a state of gratitude for having that issue to deal with. Wonderful. Great idea and great great concept for how to deal with stuff that you don't necessarily love. Be in gratitude that at least you have that challenge. Um, very cool, good idea. And so the, the thought becomes here, If you, what would you have to believe about time to make it the most valuable asset you have? Most people think money or stuff is so valuable. The truth is you can always work to get stuff back. You can always work to get money back. You can always work to get a car. You can always work to take a trip. Uh, you can't work and get more time back. Once it's gone, it's gone. That's the mirac miraculous part about it. There's only so much, and once it's gone, it's gone. Now again, these are beliefs. If you were to believe this, how would you look at your life differently? Now if you continue down this path and you continue down this journey, uh, let's see, Billy says, time is a man-made metric system that provides a choice to us either to perceive it as a tool to produce, invest in others, and enjoy life. Absolutely. So the whole concept is if you value it and you cherish it, now how do you choose to invest it? Notice I didn't say how do you manage it, I said how do you invest it? So if you were to sit down on a Sunday afternoon and say, listen, I've got so many hours this week, I think it's, um, I forget how many hours you have but so many, 100 and something hours in the week, and out of all those hours that I have, what am I gonna choose to invest them into? One thing that's mandatory, uh, just reality, is sleep. So you can write down on your calendar, okay, I'm gonna sleep from this hour to this hour as best as I can each night. Uh, according to research and studies and statistics, um, the the amount of sleep you should be going after averagely is between seven and a half to eight hours a night. Now I realize there's a lot of people who, even family members of mine, who say, "Oh, that's ridiculous. Sleep an hour less and get more done." Um, but science research studies show seven and a half hours of sleep to eight hours of sleep is the prime amount that'll refuel your body, help with longevity, help with mental focus, help with emotional focus, help with everything you need. Um, and, and research it yourself. I, I'd highly recommend you looking it up. But So let's say you get seven and a half, eight hours of sleep every single night. That blocks out a big old chunk of time that you've invested into replenishing and refueling your mind, body, and emotions all week. Now from there, you have all these awake hours. 
What other things must you absolutely invest your time into to really be the best version of who you are and maximize your productivity? For a lot of people out there, you're gonna need to invest so much time per day, 20 minutes a day, an hour a day, maybe more if you're lucky, into working out, fitness, health. So you mark that out. Say, okay, each day, I'm gonna just take my calendar and kind of scribble in, here's where my workout goes, and I'm gonna scribble in that gym time. Uh, you need to eat. Again, it's something that, that most people, you can't just go many, many weeks or days without it. So you gotta schedule in, when am I gonna eat? And how much time will I give myself to do so? Now from there, um, my thought is always work with the most valuable parts of your life first. So if I were looking at the calendar, it'd be really simple. I'd sit down and the first thing I would schedule is say, how much time do I wanna spend with my family this week? Seems to be the next most valuable thing you know, you figured out where you're going to sleep and replenish yourself. You figured out how you're going to be healthy to get the most energy and life out of yourself. The next most important thing, once you're filled, once you're focused, once you're energized, spend it with the people you love. So how much time are you going to dedicate towards the one you love, this, the ones you love this week? Schedule that in, mark it out, family time, you know, fun time, trips time, hanging out, dinner time, stuff you get to do with the ones you love. Now from there, you go down the, list, you know, the next step and say, now I've, I've got my sleep in, I've got my health in, I've got my maybe emotions fit in there too. So stuff you do and time you dedicate towards being emotionally fulfilled. But I wrap that in with health and exercise. Uh, but, but you put all that together, you time. And then you say family time with loved ones, people you care about. Then from there you go down, okay, now here's the rest of the waking hours I have in my week. What projects do I really believe in that I'm going to choose to invest time into? Notice the order here. I didn't start with, okay, well, I've got to work all this each week, and then I have, you know, I guess gym time, and then hopefully I get to see my family or my friends. No. Use your values to, to plot out what you want to do and how you want to live. And I say put the most important values first. Um, for some people, it would have been like health, church, family, something like that. For other people, depending on how you do it, hopefully this order is making sense to you. Now from there, now you look at the projects you want to work on. Instead of saying, hey, I just have to work from this hour to this hour, sit down and look at the projects you want to work on. Say, so which ones do I believe in most? Which ones am I most passionate about? And there's two ways to do this, depending on your style. Brian Tracy has a whole concept that's eat that frog. So take the slimiest, stickiest, hardest one that's going to take the most energy and mental focus, put that first and nail that one out and then go down the list and knock those the hardest ones out first. That way as the day gets easy, you know, the day goes on, the tasks you need to complete get easier because it takes less effort, less focus and less energy to get them done. So you can easily just cruise through them. Get the hard stuff done first, easy stuff and that's the hard easy. Um, other people say, listen, just categorize all the tasks you want to do Figure out which ones are like-minded tasks. Now, when you say like-minded, what you mean is which ones are like creative, emotional, fun, engaging, which ones are logical, technical, step-by-step -step detailed. Split them up, put all the detailed tasks next to all the detailed tasks, put all the emotional fun tasks or emotional engaging tasks next to all the other emotional engaging tasks. You can obviously tell which ones I like to do more. Um, and then chunk them as groups into your calendar. So as you look at your calendar, you're literally putting them in groups where it's like, hey, from 11 a.m. or let's say 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. today, I'm going to do all my highly emotional, engaging, creative um, content creation at that time because that's when I'm really energized and passionate. Now, I'm going to take a break, eat some lunch, come back, and when I come back, I'm going to do all our accounting and spreadsheets and logistics and numbers and tracking and spread detail stuff. And I'm going to chunk them together because what happens is you lose energy, you lose momentum, and you lose your ability to produce when you have to go from logic to creative, creative back to logic. And when you're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, you're losing your ability to be productive. So if you want to maximize productivity, properly group your activities on your calendar in chunks and put them next to each other. All the phone calls go together. So all our coaching calls go together. All our product cr project creation goes together. And chunk it out, ideally, into certain days of the week. Um, you know, we do marketing and creation on Mondays. We do coaching uh, for, from, I think, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Fridays, we do creation and product development and all kinds of stuff. So we chunk our days of the week to really make it something that we can maximize that mindset and that approach. Now, from there, 
what you want to train yourself to do to maximize productivity, there, there's a, I think it's a Pomodoro technique, which is 30 minutes of absolute total focus, five minute break. 30 minutes of absolute total focus, five minute break. And you, and you repeat the process again and again and again. Now, after every three cycles, so 30 minutes on, five minute break, 30 minutes on, five minute break, 30 minutes on, five minute break. Now, instead of a five minute break, you take a 15 or 30 minute break, really replenish, really refuel mentally, emotionally, and physically, then go back into the same cycle three more three rounds. And what happens is that allows you mentally, emotionally, and physically to be totally focused. And, and the other caveat that goes with this is it's single focused activities. So when you hit start on that timer, no emails, no phone calls, no interruptions, no knocking at the door, zero interruptions, totally focused, one single activity for the entire 30 minutes. Not even thoughts in your head, like clear your mind, 100% engagement and focus for 30 minutes, step out, shake your head out, do some push-ups, do some pull-ups. My thought is flood yourself with your outcome that you're trying to achieve, why it's important, how you're going to make it happen, things you're passionate about, things you're grateful for, things you learn, things you're excited about, mentally energize yourself, emotionally energize yourself, then jump right back into the next task at that moment. Um, so single focus task is really important out of that. Also, 30 minutes on, 5 minutes off, 30 minutes on, 5 minutes off, 30 minutes on, 15 minutes off, 30 minutes on, 5 minutes off, and repeat the cycle. Um, now, if you take what we've shared with you thus far, and that's all you do, you're going to be more effective than the mass majority of human beings out there because this is not what most people do. Most people know about this stuff. They hear about this stuff. They rarely apply this stuff. How do I know that? Um, because we measure our clients. And what I love you to do to see how well. So if you've taken notes thus far, you have structures we're laying out. Sit down at the beginning. Figure out what time means to you. Group time into the big chunks of the most important values first, so sleep, health, nutrition, uh, family time, fun time, work time. Structure it all in for yourself. Organize it into your calendar. Now that you have it there, you've time chunked it. You've put like things together, so things that are like each other all go in big globs together. You map it out into the week. You have it all time chunked and organized. You come down with a philosophy that says 30 minutes on, 5 minutes off, 30 minutes on, 5 minutes off, 30 minutes on, 50 minutes off, repeat the cycle. Now, if you, if you continue with this process, the, the next step to do besides single focused activity, one thing at a time, zero distractions, uh, the next thing to do with this is to really track and measure to look for performance. So there's an awesome app called A Tracker Pro, and we use this with all of our clients in the beginning for at least a week or two to figure out how well you're actually performing. So A Tracker Pro, you got to think about it. If you were an Olympic athlete and you showed up to train for the 400 meter sprint, what do we do? Well, day one, we walk you outside. We know your outcome. We know why you want it. You want to win that gold medal, which will mean so much to you. And we know exactly how we're going to train to get you there. But the challenge is we don't know what you're currently producing. So we got to know how are you currently producing? So we literally sit down, we take out a tracker pro and we categorize the different types of tasks you'll do from eating, family time, work, meetings, uh, phone calls, coaching, training, um, let's see, follow-up, team meetings, uh, reports, all the things you would do in the office and at home. And literally, we chunk them in the categories together that are reasonable. And then we ask you every single moment of the day for the next week. So it's the letter A and then Tracker Pro. It's an app. It's like five bucks to download. And for the next seven days, we have you track every single moment of your life. So we know when you went to the bathroom and for how long. We know how long it took you to drive to work or to the office. We know, you know how much time you were reading and learning. We know how much time you were with your kids and family. We know how much time it took you to eat your food. We know everything by the end of the week. And now what we do is we sit down as, you know, I sit down with my clients one-on-one. -on -one. We put their whole week up on a screen. And we look at every hour of every day and we look at how well they were able to perform based on their plan. Because we can see their plan clearly across the screen of what they said they were going to do, called their calendar. We can see their A Tracker Pro of what they actually did and we can compare it. The app actually has the ability to sync to your calendar and it'll overlay what you did versus what you said you were going to do so you can see the difference. Now, once you're able to do that, it really comes down to fine-tuning the process. And fine-tuning the process is really simple. How'd I do? <laughs> uh, 
uh, what went good this week? What did I really do well? You know, you killed the workouts every day. You totally crushed that. You did great at, you know, really maximizing those hours and time chunking together and keeping things around. You really did good on staying present and focused and energized. You really did good at getting these certain things done. Great. What did what did you learn? Well, I learned I thought it was only going to take me 10 minutes to drive from point A to point B, but with traffic, it took me 30 minutes. We jacked up the whole day's schedule. Not only that, I gave myself 20 minutes for this meeting. The meeting took two and a half hours. Not only that, and you learn all these things. You see what didn't quite match up and what you can learn from it, how you can better prepare for the next week. Now, from there, you sit down and say, okay, how could I do better? Now, you look at what you've just done. You map out all the little ways you could do better, and you set a goal for the next seven days. Based on what actually happened, your plan versus life, you match it up, you figure out how to reorganize the next seven days, you map this stuff into your calendar, and literally you have a seven-day accountability plan to get yourself to perform better in the, in the next week. Now with this, ideally, it's best when you have an outside person to hold you accountable. Because what I've learned is as many people know this logically, as many of you watching going, oh, this sounds great, good stuff, good stuff, most of you won't do it. <laughs> or you'll do it for like a day and a half, and then you'll forget about it. So you want to find someone that can hold you accountable so that at the end of seven days you can sit down with and say, okay, let's review this. 100% focus, so get a productivity coach, get someone who can hold you accountable to this, sit down with them on, you know, the next week and look over your calendar. Organize what worked, what didn't. Organize how effective you were. Organize how consistent you were. And this is kind of level one of planning. If you can get all this stuff done and organized and together, all of a sudden now... You can step back and say, okay, let's step up our game. Level two planning. Now, not only were you able to consistently execute and were you able to consistently nail down what needed to get happen and really deliver, this next step, were you 100% present? Were you able to mentally, emotionally, and physically clear your mind and not a single thought entered your mind except for you and the task at hand for the entire prolonged 30 minutes at a time? And what's amazing is if you can make that happen, you will see your productivity maximize. You'll be able to do in 30 minutes what it takes most people two and a half hours to do because your single focus where they're scattered and all over the place and answering the phone and answering emails and checking stuff and doing all kinds of random crap instead of being 100% focused. So your productivity will increase. Um, what's fascinating, my friend wrote a book called The Myth of Multitasking. His name is Dan Crenshaw. He went and did research inside of organizations and figured out on average, for every 60 minutes worked as an average employee in a corporate America, um, there's only 20 minutes of actual productivity completed. What that means is there's 40 minutes every hour of distraction, people off track, and people not getting anything done that they thought they were going to get done. And what that has to do with is trying to multitask, trying to go back and forth between multiple activities at once, which you're losing time every time you switch back and forth. So if you want to massively increase your productivity, 30 minutes, single focus, zero distraction, five minute break, 30 minutes. Now, a lot of people ask what to do with that five minutes. Um, affirmations, incantations, bathroom break, hydrate, fill your mind with your goals and your vision and your desires. Um, if you, depending on how you plan, you might use uh, the getting things done method where you brain dump and then you do vertical and lateral planning where it's, uh, you know, project titles and then under the project, everything that needs to happen to get it complete. You might do RPM planning. What's my outcome? Why is it a must? How do I make it happen? Uh, you might do Brian Tracy, eat the frog, make your to-do list, the sticky hard stuff first. I don't know what plan you use. We use all of them with our clients. We let them choose what works best for them. Uh, you might have a Stephen Covey planner where you're working in the four quadrants of importance, trying to stay in the zone. So it doesn't matter what style or process you use. What matters is this overall framework you use with it. Um, now, the fun part is really training yourself to get this done. We actually have a friend we're going to do an interview with on JRC TV that they have a boot camp you can go through for, I think, like seven weeks or ten weeks or something that literally as a group, they hold you accountable every single week to doing this kind of stuff. One thing after the next thing after the next thing after the next thing. Um, so if you're interested in it, let us know. Just send us a tweet or a Facebook message and, and we'll... Uh, tell you when it's coming up and how you can get involved. But I went through it personally at the beginning of, of the, the year. It was remarkable. We loved it. They went through all kinds of tips like this, and every week you just apply them and practice the execution. So a lot of time management has very little to do with the understanding tips and strategy and more to do with actual deliverable activity and execution of it. Um, 
again, learning how to run to get an Olympic medal is very little to do with about execution and strategy. You get on the track, you run like hell. Yes, there's some ways we can tweak your performance as far as gait and structure and performance and practice and movement and mindset. Um, but it really comes down to consistency and practice and, and the ability to get yourself to perform at a high performance level consistently when it matters most day to day. So that's the same thing with um, the time management is it really comes down to getting you to consistently effectively deliver and execute on these kind of tools that gets you to maximize performance. Two ways to do that. One, get a coach that can help you with it. We can. This guy right here, really good at this stuff. Obviously, I can help you. Uh, join a program where there's a group of you or find an accountability partner to hold each other accountable and really push each other to do this kind of stuff. Let's see what kind of questions we have popping up. Um, Kylie says, RPM Planet Tony Robbins changed my life. Awesome. Um, also, on day 19 of Rapid Results. Very awesome. Oh, cool. Glad to hear you love it. We talk about this kind of stuff in our Rapid Results Formula program online. Um, I think we have it up on sale for like 147 or 197 on our website, jerickrobbins.com. Uh, look under products, Rapid Results Formula 2.0. We go through these types of tools with you and effectively help you put them to use with worksheets and little, you know, five minute episodes each day. Uh, coaches are a must, I believe so too, Katie. Um, let's see what else we got. Time Chung can change my life. That's awesome. Loving it. Need to hear this talk. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, if you found this useful, please hit the share button and tell other people why should they should tune in and check this out. Uh, Katie says, time seems to be the most wasted asset. If you're building an empire, be dedicated to what you are willing to give up, like sleep, going out, actually surf, saying no more to... Uh, saying no more to achieve more, allow you to use your time on things that are most important to achieve your why. Absolutely, very cool. Hi from Memphis, what up? Thank you for sharing your wisdom. I'm a full-time loving touring musician. Awesome, time management is crucial to survive. Yes, it is. Let's see, we got more stuff coming through. Excellent program, you're very welcome. Glad to hear that. Uh, what advice do you have for an artist songwriter whose process is more abstract? Oh, great question. So everything I've just shared with you right now is for performance in an entrepreneurial business setting. This is not helpful if you are a um, mom who has many moving parts, who's got to remember to do a million things at once, who's got to pick up the kids, do the you know, kick the food take care of the house, get stuff ready, make yourself look nice, do all these million things. Like this time chunking shit doesn't work in your world. It, it really doesn't. Not because you don't want it to. It doesn't work because there's too many moving random parts that are uncontrollable. You can try to control it. I mean, this will stress you out, to be honest. You'll be like, hey, we must leave the house at 6 p.m. this evening. And at 6 o'clock, your little child has a tummy ache and throws up everywhere and uh, needs to take a bath and comb its hair and do all this other stuff. And you don't leave till 7.30. Life. <laughs> Good luck with time chunking. Um, the, the, the factor that comes in handy when you're more artistic, creative, um, you're, you're a parent, you have many moving parts, you have many things going in all directions, it, it, it's not time chunking. It's, it's moving from outcome-focused activity to outcome-focused activity. So what I mean is, as an artist in creativity mode, you sit down, you nail down your outcome. So what do I want to work on? What's my number one thing I want to accomplish or complete within the next, you know, frame of time? And you don't even have to set a time. You just say, listen, uh, I have all morning. What's the number one outcome I want to achieve? You sit down and you get to work on that outcome. And you work on it until it's complete, period. And if you say, listen, I'm going to give myself from 9 a.m. till noon to get this song written. It gets to noon and you're only about a third of the way in, no problem. Hit pause, step out, go do something else, go get you know other work done, go help, help on the tour, recordings, whatever, editing, whatever you need to do, and then circle back around and say, tomorrow I'm going to give myself a big old chunk of time again to work at it. Now, what's interesting, in artist and creative mode, you need to identify at what point in the day or night or evening are you most effective. Are you most effective in the mornings? Are you most effective in the afternoons? Are you most effective at 4.30 in the morning or, you know, 3 in the afternoon, whatever it is, 6 p.m.? Figure out when you're most effective and most creative and most energized. That's when you work on your art and creativity. That's very important for time management as far as artists and creatives. 
Um, now, now, with that, uh, you build everything else around the most important element of your creation. So if you need to go get a side job and you work best from 4 in the morning till 8 in the morning, sleep and get an afternoon job. If you, you, know, if you, if you need to do anything else, you wrap it around your creation of your art. If you're a parent, obviously everything gets wrapped around usually your little one for so many years. And we don't have a child yet, but I know many parents, and usually their life is wrapped around what that child has to do. At some point, you have to start rebalancing and saying, hey, they're old enough. I don't need to spend every waking moment chasing them around and doing what they need. I can start taking care of me and, and balancing that out. But in the beginning, really, truly focusing on, on that, that love or that art or that passion and making that the priority. Uh, Eric says, would you agree that time management is really energy management? Um, to an extent. Uh, you, you, here's the, the God honest truth. There's a great program I was listening to the other day. Um, let's see. It's right here. It's called the 21-Day Time Breakthrough by Dan Sullivan, strategic coach. So I was listening to this the other day. And one thing that he talks about is it's not as much as time management because it, it's something that drives everyone nuts. You cannot control time. What he means is you can't decide, hey, uh, pause, pause, pause. I, I, I want it to stay at 1 o'clock for the next two days because I need to really just focus on 1 o'clock today. You can't control that. Whether you like it or not, it's going to go 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock every day. It's just going to happen. You can't control that. So to think you can control time or manage time is an illusion. What it really is is, Eric, what you're saying, managing your emotional state, managing yourself through navigating the time that's available to you. So that's another, if you go all the way back to the beginning of this discussion, Eric, we talked about what is time. So that, that whole thought process is your ability to manage yourself through the maze of time or through the day that exists there. Um, do what you do best at the time you know your body does it best. Absolutely. So as we were just talking about, if you're an artist or a creative, and, and even if you're not, if you're looking at performance, um, that structured time still put stuff in the place where you can perform your absolute best at them. So hopefully this is all useful. If you have any questions and you're listening to the podcast, uh, feel free to tweet them to me and I'd be happy to answer them to you on a future episode or I'll tweet back at you. Uh, if you're on the live cast right now on Facebook, feel free to drop any questions you have right down in the little comment section here and I will do my best to answer them for you for whatever I've got. Uh, let's see. We've got a handful of people watching. Hopefully you're having some fun and learning something useful. Uh, Eric's well said. Thank you. You're so welcome. So we'll open this up to Q&A. Any other questions? They don't have to be about time management. It could be about other topics as well. But we'll keep recording for just a few more minutes. And then I'm going to call it time and go spend some family time. Any other questions? Doesn't look like we have any other questions. Oh. Thank you, extremely informative, so very welcome. So here's what I'd ask, if you found this useful, um, all I'd ask, hit that share button, spread the message, help reach it, help it get out to more people, and make sure you write a little message with it, like, hey, great tips on time management, here's three things I learned, tune in and check it out, something like that. That way people know what they're getting into. Um, Gove says, what is the best time management tool you like? So here's what's fun, there are so many great time management tools. The most common ones that we find are used by executives and professionals are Getting thing done, Things Done by David Allen. And he talks about, so basically, taking out a pen and paper, brain dumping everything you want to accomplish, then splitting it into prioritization, so which ones are most important that need to get done now. From there, splitting it into vertical and horizontal planning, uh, which basically says the types of projects go across the line, and then below each one are all the activities that have to happen to complete it. And from there, using that to manage um, your, your, your flow of what has to get done. One of the useful factor, he says, is having a plan of a one-touch method. So if you have an email or a letter or something that comes to you, there's only so many things you can do. Read it and respond. Delete it or trash it. Um, leverage it or delegate it to someone else. Or file it to a folder that you'll come back to later. That way you never just open it, read it, and go, oh shoot, and then leave it there, and your brain keeps thinking about it. You wanna get rid of all the excess stuff by having something you've done with it that now it is complete until some future time, like a future time to revisit this folder, 
It's off your plate and your assistant will handle it. If you've trashed it, it's gone. You don't have to think about it any longer. Um, a great tip and technique as far as just little tips uh, if for emails, there's a program called Send Later, and they have it for Mac and PC, where you can answer an email right now to get it off your plate and hit Don't Send until next Thursday at 3 p.m. And it'll stay in your outbox until Thursday at 3 p.m. and then automatically send to the person it was supposed to go to. If you have a client or a person you deal with that's always like you send them a message, they send you right back a message. You send them a message, they send it right back. Um, instead of playing table tennis with them or ping pong via email, um, you send later. It'll save you a whole lot of time because you can send it out. It just sits there until next Thursday at 2 when they need it. You don't have to think about it ever again. It's gone. It's out of your mental capacity and space. You can forget about it, move on, and do more things with that space in your mind. Um, oh, so I was saying, getting things done with David Allen. The whole eat that frog concept with Brian Tracy is very useful. We did a JRC TV episode with him on his time management system. It's very useful and simple and effective. Uh, my dad's RPM system is awesome. So outcome focused, purpose driven, massive action plan, very useful. It has an emo emotional engagement for people who need that emotional engagement to inspire themselves to action. If you're more of an emotional person, RPM is the planning system for you. If you're more of a logical, technical person who you don't really care if it's emotionally engaging or not, you just have to get it done because you said you would, then other, you know, Stephen Covey is great um, for that kind of thought process of just write it down, get it done, write it down, get it done, no emotional engagement. Um, Brian Tracy is great there too, so is David Allen. So those are some of my favorites. Uh, strategic Coach has some great time management tips. One of my favorite, favorite, favorite things I've done in this last probably 12 months is there is a time hack boot camp that we're gonna do a JRC TV episode with the, the founder of it that I went through where he takes all these little time hacks to improve performance. He builds it into like, I think it was a 10 or seven to 10 week program online. And each week you get an episode of exactly how to improve your performance that week and exactly what to do. Um, so go, I would highly check or re recommend that. We'll be sending an email out in a few weeks about it. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna interview him tomorrow about the, the boot camp and what it's about. Uh, let's see, Billy, do you have a plan your day the night before? Absolutely. So, oh, I forgot. Kylie says my rapid result program has, has helped use the RPM planner better. Awesome. Glad it's effective. So go. F also, we have a program called uh, Rapid Results Formula 2.0. It's a lot of little simple techniques like this that five minutes a day with a worksheet to get you to implement it immediately. So check out our program. It's, I think it's 150 bucks, 200 bucks or something on our website. Check that out. Billy, do you like to plan your day the night before? Absolutely. So I'll show you what we do. Um, so to start off with I'll just put this in order if you, if you use RPM type stuff um, we have a long term like 5, 10, 20 year vision for our life we have that mapped out we have our one year kind of goals we do and we have so why they're an absolute must what we want to achieve and then what we have to do the actions we have to take to get them done so I read that, so first I read off the 20 year vision goals in the morning, then I read the one year goals and outcomes for all the major categories of life, and then each week I sit down and we map out in the RPM format all the major outcomes in each major category of life. So if I were to read you my health and fitness outcome for this week, it's to create a world class health and fitness at 210 pounds, 10% body fat or, less, or fat or less, more flexibility, more strength, more endurance, purpose to energize and maximize my mind, body, and spirit, to prep for a long, healthy, and abundant life, because health is wealth, to prep, prepare like a warrior, massive action plan of how I'm going to get it done, lift three to five days a week, run 20 minutes a day, stretch daily, alkaline meals, yoga twice a, a week, sleep seven hours a night, measure and track daily. So I go through that, and I have one for emotional, family, intimate relationships, spiritual, business, finance, and then within our business, we have a whole other set of outcomes here for Performance Coach University, marketing, speaking, coaching, and, and all the other things mapped out. So those go from 20, you know, long-term vision, 20, 15 year, to one year outcomes and organization plan of how we're going to make it happen this year and what we're going to achieve, all the way down to weekly outcomes. And you can see, if we come through here, we have week after week after week after week of all our plans that we write out physically every single week in that order. So the other reason why I have them right now, I'm very emotional. I know that drives me. So what happens is I read these things to myself while walking on my awesome treadmill desk back here. See, treadmill desk, vision boards. 
So while I'm walking in the morning up there, I'm reading that stuff to myself out loud. You can ask my wife. I seem to read it very loudly. She tends to enjoy it. <laughs> um, but it's the process of every morning I wake up, do my meditation, come over here, jump on that treadmill desk, start walking, and literally, I'm so grateful. 20 years, you know, you know, I'm so grateful God's wealth flows to us and avalanches of abundance. All our needs, wants, desires are made instantaneously by infinite intelligence. And then I'm so grateful our health and fitness 20 years from now is stronger than ever before. Um, you know, I'm, I'm so grateful that emotionally we're passionate about our lives, living on a mission, enjoying every moment life has to offer. I'm so grateful we're passionately in love, and our, and our love and passion for each other goes daily. When we're together, anything's possible. So these are things I'm thinking about 20 years out in the future. And then from there, come to the one-year plan, the weekly plan, and by then, my mind, my body, my emotions are on freaking fire. Do incantations, affirmations, a little visualization, out the door, hit the gym, and I'm ready to conquer life at that point. But I'm very emotional. For logical people, that does not make any sense. It makes more sense to them to open it up, look at the calendar, have their night map, you know, the night before, map out their time chunks, wake up in the morning, look at their chunks, and just go get it done. Because that's a very logical approach. Um, seems like you emotional guys out there, that would be helpful. Uh, time planning the night before I learned from you in daily journaling. Absolutely. So journaling at the end of the day is also a great time management tip. Capturing what worked, what didn't, how you can improve is very useful. Billy says, blown away. Awesome. Kyle, this is huge value seeing this in real life. Well, glad I could uh, share. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, list your must-reads book for first-time entrepreneurs. Oh. Uh, must-read books for first-time entrepreneurs. I have a stack downstairs I will take you to go see. Oh, I can't. We have a podcast going. Um, let's see. I will pause this podcast. And we'll take you downstairs to show you what we have for first-time entrepreneurs. Do, 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 do. Here is our puppy. Say hi. Say hi. Come here. Uh, let's see. First-time entrepreneurs. So book number one for first-time entrepreneurs is The Ultimate Success Blueprint for an Insanely Successful Business, Keith J. Cunningham. Awesome book. Uh, we got this one for learning what to do with your money by Mr. Tony Robbins. Uh, Ask Gary Vaynerchuk, great pile of books here. Uh, one Entrepreneur's Take on Leadership, Social Media, Self-Awareness. The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. Great, great, great book for entrepreneurs. Uh, this one is killer once you start making some money. So how to lower your taxes big time by Sandy Botkins. This is for U.S.-based people. They have a Canadian one too, but U.S.-based mainly. So those are some books. I think we have some more around. For first-time entrepreneurs, those are some useful books for, for getting started on yourself. Um, E-Myth is probably one of the best ones when you're first getting started. The, our book, Live It, Achieve Success by Living on Purpose, is an awesome book for getting started, helping map out your plan, your vision, what you're trying to accomplish, where you're trying to go. Uh, it's very useful. Oh, now he wants to play. Get in here. Uh, anyways, I'm going to get going. So hopefully this was useful. Hopefully you learned something great. If you have any questions, feel free to tweet us or message us. Please hit that share button, spread the message, let people know, and I will see y'all later.